All right, what's up? So um, UFC 248, uh, uh, Adesanya Romero. Now, we're looking at Izzy, who's like, what, six foot something? He's tall, lanky, stretchy guy. Um, 18 wins under his belt, undefeated. This guy has been in the UFC for less than two years, and he's climbed his way to the top. Um it's very rare for uh, a fighter to have done that in the UFC. This was seen very rarely. Um, and so to see someone like this, um, you know, just stemming from like, you know, Nigeria coming in and like proving his worth and showing just how much determination and, and, uh, and dedication can get uh can bring back to you is just extremely inspiring for me the the moments that were that began to sort of ignite his um career i think was his first fight against Derek brunson uh this fight took place in uh november 4th um 2018 and basically adesanya was at the time uh only a few months into the ufc and so he was absolutely the underdog um before the fight came up uh you know all the commentators like joe rogan uh michael bisping etc they were saying how like yeah dasanya is a good fighter but hey you know you got Derek brunson who's got a lot more experience under his belt like he's a true veteran like he'll smoke him etc a lot of podcasts uh also on the in the youtube community were uh that were analyzing this fight and predicting this fight um were basically saying similar things on how uh yeah Adesanya, it'd be so epic if he won this fight against brunson uh but i really don't think it's gonna work and then boom Adesanya delivers um knocks out uh brunson surprises him absolutely uh knocks him on his ass basically um and then after that um Adesanya goes on to face kevin gastelum and if i remember correctly i remember gastelum uh his fight with dustin poirier that's uh that's why i remember gastelum but he's an absolute animal like you know he's a tough guy and i think he had even more experience than Derek brunson and so when Adesanya took him on uh they were like yeah i mean Derek brunson was a good fighter um but he's not as good as uh, gastelum Adesanya, boom, left hook, completely smokes him, you know, like completely left him um, on his on his ass again. And he he took the W again against uh, Gastelum. So uh, what happens next is uh, Robert Whitaker comes up and Robert Whitaker at the time was the um, the champion. OK, uh, he had defeated uh, Yoel Romero uh, in um, in a fight that went the distance. Now, uh, there were times where uh, Romero was dropped. There were times where Whitaker was dropped. And but at the same time, it was a very like it was a really, really close decision uh, by the judges. A lot of people thought Romero had it in the back. Whitaker won. And so Whitaker was basically at the top of the world. Uh, back then and so Adesanya stepped up to the plate against Robert Whitaker uh, I was a big I am a big fan of uh, Robert Whitaker and I remember as soon as this fight uh, came about um, I didn't really know who Adesanya was like I I knew it's like oh undefeated I think he was 10 and 0 at the time uh, yeah he was a great fighter etc but I'm like you know like he's got to get on un- he's got to get defeated at some point and who better than Robert Whitaker like He's just an absolute animal. And I just love him as a dude, like outside, like he's got a family. He's, he's got his head in like in the right place. He's just a really good, uh, human being. And that's what makes me respect him even more. And so going into this fight against, um, uh, Adesanya, I was all for Whitaker. I was like, yo, like, I hope Whitaker, like, I hope Whitaker does this. And as I was watching the fight, like you have Whitaker who was just storming in, Right, he was trying to go for that raw dog, just boom, 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 like going in, you know, swerving, just locking in. Um, but then Adesanya, you'll see that he waits him out. He pl- he plays more of a tactical, uh, a tactical game. He waits him out. He you know he he moves swiftly, like very, very, you know, very flexible, very light on his feet. Then at the end, Adesanya just comes in and unleashes, and he drops Whitaker. Now. Whitaker got saved by the bell. So this was Whitaker got tro- got dropped twice in two rounds. Um, so you'll see Adesanya, uh, he, 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 he throws a right, hits Whitaker, Whitaker, boom, falls back. He was out, cold, absolutely cold. Bell rings, boom. 
And so that was the moment where I was watching the fight and I was like, yo, like when, when a fighter gets knocked out like that, where you fall back on your head, like you just fall like a sack of potatoes, like your head hits the canvas and it bounces back up. Chances are you're not going to get back to that fighter instinct and win the, win the match. Like I just, so when I saw Whitaker like that, I was like, oh, it's over. And so, you know, after the second round, like he drops Whitaker again, boom, it's over. And so that is sort of the journey that uh, Adesanya has, you know, led up to at some point. Uh, obviously not the full journey, right? But though these are the sort of the main fights that led him up to uh, where he is now. He fought Brunson. He was the underdog one. He fought Gastelum, absolute animal. He beat Gastelum. He beat Robert Whitaker, who beat Romero. And so then, while uh, Adesanya was facing, uh, while Adesanya was facing um, Robert uh, Robert Whitaker, you had Yo Romero fighting the Eraser, Paulo Costa. And so, if you look at uh, Paulo Costa, he's a he's he's a twenty eight year old, and like out of anyone in the UFC roster, I've not seen anyone as big as him, uh, other than maybe Brock Lesnar in his prime, but. Or over him if we want to include steroids as well. But like Polo Costa is an absolute machine. You know, he's called the eraser, you know, like meaning like he erases you, like he punches you and you're gone. Like, you, you know, you don't, you're gone. Um, and so uh, they fought and I think this was an amazing fight. Like one of the greatest fights I've seen, um, just complete unleashing, like two absolute like warriors, just right, left kicks. They ended the, you know, the match, uh, the fight, it went the distance and, uh, you know, everyone thought Romero had won, uh, but they gave the victory to Paulo Costa. Paulo Costa, 28 years old, uh, you know, he was declared, you know, victor. He was, he was declared victorious. And so um, this happened before the Adesanya Whitaker fight. So after Adesanya knocked out Whitaker, you see Adesanya climbing the cage and just flipping off Paulo Costa saying like, you're next, like I'm going to come for you. So the question is now, why isn't Adesanya fighting uh, the eraser, Paulo Costa? Now, what happened was that after the fight against Romero, um, Paulo Costa started ducking like i'm not gonna like no one has the evidence because uh you know doctors said that he had a bicep injury like a bicep tear that would had you know that would have to keep him out for months but as a ufc fan like we've seen this happen for you know a lot of times where fighters just pull out because of you know an injury they presume to have like oh like like aldo ducked uh the mcgregor fight because of a bruised foot uh you know, and then they had to postpone the actual fight and then McGregor knocked him out in 12 seconds. But, you know, that's besides the point. So, you know, it was supposed to be Paulo Costa in this position. And so what Adesanya now, he was left with no one to fight. And so what does Adesanya do? Adesanya, he, he thinks and he's like, yo, who is the baddest motherfucker that I can find and I can take on? Yo, Romero is the name that comes up to his mind. He's like, I want to fight Yoel Romero. This guy's the baddest man. And, and so as soon as he challenged, like he asked for the fight, which is why Joe Rogan was like, yo, like that's why I respect this guy so much because he asked that fight. Like, do you realize like who you're wanting to fight? Like there's people that will do anything not to get in the ring with that animal, Yoel Romero. Like he's 42 years old. Like his, 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 uh, you know, he comes from, uh, from a line of Cuban boxers. He, he's an Olympic, um, wrestling champion. Like he's got the DNA of an absolute tank. Like, why would you get in a ring with Yoel Romero? No one knows, but Adesanya himself. He's like, I want to make sure that I can put this guy away. No one's ever done it before. Like no one's ever knocked out Yo Romero. No one's ever knocked him out. And so Adesanya is like, yo, like I want to be the first guy to shut this man up because if if I can beat Yo Romero, like I'm officially the greatest, which is true. And so this is where we're at now. Uh, we have Yo Romero, who's an absolute uh, veteran. He like <laughs> he shadow boxes with twenty pound <laughs> dumbbells. Like he's just. Oh my, like if you just look at some of his like training, uh, things on YouTube, Yo Romero training, Yo Romero sparring, like 
you'll see him and you're like, what even are you? And he's 42 years old. Um, and obviously now uh, both fighters did the whole like uh, they did the media, they did the thing, the, the the press conference kind of where you had the dance off between the two. I did a video on that as well. Um, and so now like this is it, you know, five days uh, until a fight happens and it's going to be absolutely insane. Uh, I made this video to sort of give a background for the people that don't watch UFC um, that want to know like what all this hype is like, cause the UFC is growing and like people don't know why it's like, yeah, there's two, two animals. Like there's two warriors beating each other up in a cage, which is, which is, you know, entertaining. But at the same time, it's like, it's, I think it's also really cool to latch on to the story behind those fighters. That's what I think builds a sport even more. Uh, not just like, Oh, great knockout. It's also like, yo, like look where he came from and look where he is now. It, it, it's i just think what what these fighters both uh men and women show is just the sheer the, the power of sheer determination and and just you know the relentlessness to you know keep going and persevere and and just continue to do everything to reach that um you know uh, UFC fighters to me are one of the most inspiring uh sportsmen because i think it's just so hard like cutting weight making weight is difficult it's also the mental game during the press conference you have people that are good at with words and like you know all that jargon um and then you have fight day itself where you have uh you know thousands thousands of uh fans watching chanting your name ch uh, thousands of fans booing you at the same time you have to listen to the guy your, your coach in your corner to tell that keeps telling you what you worked on for all this time and to implement it in battle at the same time you have to try to interpret what the opponent is doing and what he's intercepting like what he thinks you're gonna do it's just such a complicated um sport in all levels which is why it makes it so good in the next video i'll be uh, talking about my predictions as to how these fights will go it's like yeah okay you gave us the background but like who's gonna win who's gonna get knocked out um so stay on the lookout for the next video where i'll disclose all of that stuff so i'll see you guys in the next one